Welcome everybody to another episode of Firebirds Focus. Today we have a guest with us, Trayvon Shorts. Hey Trayvon, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. How you doing yourself? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. It's uh, I'm excited to be able to interview you today. Uh, so just tell us a little bit, bit about yourself. What position do you play? What college did you play? Uh, well, I play, I've been playing for the uh, Albany Firebirds slash Albany Empire for the last five seasons other than the 23 season. But I played running back and linebacker, well, fullback and linebacker. But I went to Fairmont State, Division II, uh, West Virginia. Uh, played linebacker there. And I might say the transition from outdoor football to arena football was definitely definitely a little kinks. But coming in my rookie year, we had a lot of vets that were established in the game. So it helped me out a lot this season. That's great. Yeah, it sounds like you got a lot of professional experience. For people who think the NFL is like the only professional route for football, what would you have to say to them? Uh, one, I tell them because I was the same way. I, when I was young, I didn't think I would ever play arena football. I've watched arena football. I even had the game when I was younger, but I never imagined myself playing arena football. So once I got into it and i seen the fans the the atmosphere and the moments that i've got the experience with my teammates and stuff like i tell everybody it's worth it like it's definitely worth it so and if you are good you can price yourself so like i'm not saying you're going to get nfl money but there's some dudes that can actually be able to live nice off of what they get from arena yeah, that makes sense. So for people trying to make it at any level, then would you have like any advice for them? I'll just keep working hard for <laughs> real. Basically, uh, I tell people this all the time. Like, if you look at nature <laughs> and it's going to get a little deep for you. But if you look at nature, nothing in nature is a straight line. So God doesn't create. From point A to point B. Anytime you see a straight line, that's a man made or something made it. So, since you know God doesn't create a straight lines, just know your path is never going to be a straight line. There's always going to be something that goes wrong. There's always going to be an obstacle that you have to overcome. So, just be prepared for it and don't let it discourage you. Yeah, just kind of like dealing with the ups and downs as they go. That that makes yeah. sense. Uh, speaking of kind of ups and downs, looking forward to different things what are your goals for this season uh my goals for this season one of course uh to get that taste out of my mouth win the championship <laughs> uh but uh i would say some of my goals for this season personal goals would be a better team leader better captain uh i would say i want to be more dependable on everything like on offense and defense even though i know we're not doing the Iron Man rules, but I'm still the Iron Man of the year. So <laughs> it's I still want to be prepared for both sides. And I just want to be able to help as much as possible. Right. I just want to be able to do everything. And if the accolades come with it, they come with it. But yeah, I'm I'm planning on having a special season this year. I'm sure you will. We're all cheering for you. Well instead of looking forward though, just looking back, what's your favorite Firebirds game you've ever been a part of? Firebirds, specifically Firebirds game. Yep. I uh, I would say, oh, we had a few tough ones this season, though. <laughs> we did. It stuck. It stuck between Week One versus Orlando mm -hmm. and Week Seven versus West Texas. What made those so special? Uh, how the games went out. Uh, Orlando, we ended up pulling, we ended up scoring at like ten points or eleven points in like twelve seconds. Like, wow. game was crazy. Uh, to win that game, then West Texas, we were tied seventy seventy in overtime, and that game. And it was a whole bunch of great plays that game, but Marcus Smith made the play of the game on what on like a third and 15 they threw they threw like a hitch route over me i turned around he had to jump for it 
comes down. As soon as he comes down, Marcus lays him out, takes the ball. We go down, ended up marching down the field, going to field goal, won the game. But, yeah, those two for sure probably yeah, probably my two favorites. I can see why that would be exciting. Yeah. Uh, so you're mentioning earlier you were – you said fullback and linebacker, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure in, like, some of these games, like you said, like 77, it's close, it's overtime. You uh, wish you could maybe be more places than one. If there was any other position you could play, what would you want to do? Uh, I joke all the time and tell them, like, yeah, I could play deep safety. <laughs> <laughs> and and they tried me one day at practice, but I feel like it was a setup. They put me against one of our fans, the receivers, uh, at DT, <laughs> Barry Townsend. And I was like, yeah. Uh, I was coming off a little ankle sprain and stuff, so it was all right. But I told him I'm back right now, so I could definitely do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It sounds like good memories. So speaking of like memories, what does being part of the Albany Fibers mean to you? I would say it's family. Like the amount of community, the amount of trust that I've built with not only just the players, but the owners and the coaches and everybody in the community is just, it's just love. Like it's definitely like second home from home. Yeah, absolutely. I get that feel when I work here, just everybody really loves the sport, the team, everybody kind of knows each other. It's a big community. Like you said, uh, mm -hmm. outside of football though, what else do you like to do hobby wise? You said hobby wise? Oh, whatever, I, mean, I guess. I'm more of a chill guy. I be in here chilling with my dog for real for the most part, but mm -hmm. we watch a lot of TV shows, but I've really been on to, lately I've been reading books. So me and my mother, <laughs> me and my mother got these audio books we listen to, and it's a lot of murder mysteries from uh, the author Frieda McFadden. I've never heard of that. Oh, yeah. So look her up. She's a uh, New York bestseller author, but Frieda McFadden, she got a whole bunch of... Uh, murder mystery books and the reason i love it is because it's never who you think it is <laughs> as soon as you think somebody it is like you got to remember that's just not how her mind works so i got i gotta look into that because i used to love reading the hardy boys and yeah. the time though you knew exactly who it was so i, got, I mm -hmm. gotta try that so i'm like not able to know the ending right at the beginning yeah uh so i'm curious too why is your nickname the koza king uh <laughs> Koza King. Uh, Koza King is my brand, but Koza is Czech for goat. Okay. So it means basically basically goat king. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of the story of uh, the Monkey King. I know you've seen the Black the the, new, the black Wusong King, the new video game that's out. I, I'm so lost. Oh, oh, wait. Right. The one with the monkeys. They were fighting yes. the good grass. Yes, team. and the dude, and he got the pole. Yes, 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 yes. So, so that's basically where the name originally started from, because that's like an old, old story. So, I was just in the house thinking one day, and and I was just like, I I wanted to put Goat King, but I was like, nah, that's too obvious. Everybody put Goat King, so I was just looking up different words, like different languages of goat, then found a check <laughs> that. Koza King, Koza is goat, so I put Koza King. What's your favorite NBA team? <laughs> Yo, Boston Celtics. Ah, uh, <laughs> no, that's not good. Uh, don't let me, don't let me go get the hat now. No, I got, I got Kyrie right here. You beat him in the finals. Oh the my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, well, thanks for time with me, Trayvon. This was great. Uh, before we close, you got anything to say to the fans? Oh, yeah, no, I'm excited for this season. I can't wait. I've been working out with some of the our teammates, uh, me and Zeke, Zeke Rose. Uh, we come to find out he lived like 20 minutes away from me, so we go hit the field and stuff yeah, last night, so it's been good. So, yeah, definitely can't wait for the season. Can't wait to be back out there and definitely excited for this weekend. Oh, not this weekend, it's Wednesday. Whatever news y'all got. <laughs> yeah, for our conference. Yeah, to everyone watching this, definitely tune into that. And again, thank you, Trayvon, for interviewing with us. And thank you to the fans and those watching for watching another episode of Firebirds Focus. We'll be back again soon. We're looking forward to a great right. season. Thanks, Trayvon.